So, so far we have looked primarily at the wind turbine design and looked at primarily land areas. Okay. Now, uh, in the last few decades, offshore wind turbines have also become extremely popular. So, this is a figure of an offshore wind turbine uh, power plant. And you see, uh, so one of the advantages of an offshore wind farm is that you are getting significantly faster wind speeds. As we discussed, wind speeds over, uh, over the seas, near, even near the shore, can be 10 times faster than wind speeds on the land. And you are getting, because of this V cube effect, you are getting available power is 1000 times greater than in the, uh, in the, uh, on, on land. Okay. So, therefore, there is a significant advantage of having wind turbines situated offshore if you have the technological ability to do that. And we do have that. Okay. Because if you see, many of the oil rigs are also offshore platforms. So, developing offshore platforms and putting uh, uh, mechanical uh, uh, engines like wind turbines, like oil pumps, etc., is something that is technologically feasible and that is all being already done. So, there has been a lot of investment on developing offshore wind farms that can generate much higher values of power output uh, because of the uh, higher wind speeds that are available in the offshore regions. So, these are faster and steadier winds. So, the winds are also much steady. So, they do not change a lot from day to day or year to year. Okay. Uh, on land, the wind speeds are far less, are far more variable. So, you have a larger variability component as well. So, you are getting more power output and steadier power output. So, intermittency problems are lower. Furthermore, there are absence of problems related to land acquisitions and noise complaints. So, uh, you do not have problems related to getting land from the wind turbines because offshore land areas can be directly contracted from the government. You do not have to work with private parties. And there are also no noise complaints. If the wind turbines are too close to uh, communities, they often report a problem with noise coming from the wind turbines because it is kind of a big fan. So, there is a problem with noise that sometimes occur. Okay. Also, there are no obstacles. So, hence the wind is blowing steadily and at a smooth pace. So, it is basically the same issue. Now, some of the disadvantages is that of course, it is more, the design is more challenging and it is more capital intensive. So, there is a greater complexity in erecting and maintaining floating towers far from land and there is a chance of heavy storms and associated damage. Clearly, shore areas are uh, vulnerable to cyclones, tornadoes. Uh, typhoons and other types of storms which blow at a much fiercer pace on the shores than in the coast or further inland. So, storm uh, created damage can decrease the lifetime of these offshore wind farms significantly. Okay. Then there is a problem of corrosion caused by salty seas and salt water sprays. Remember, these wind turbines are oper operating over oceans. Okay. So, there are waves water, salty water and sprays coming from the ocean, ocean, ocean waves. Okay. And these salt water causes corrosion problems for the material of the wind turbine and the wind turbine towers. So, again, your material lifetimes may be decreased significantly and you may have to repair and maintain the offshore wind turbines far more often than the land based wind turbine because of this sea water caused corrosion effects. Then there is a difficulty in transmitting electricity through electric cables over or under the ocean. So clearly electric cables is something that does not gel well with water. Okay. And you have the problem of transmitting high volumes of electricity through high tension power from the wind turbines to an offshore transformer station. Right. So that is also adds to the capital cost. So, overall, we are getting a higher capital and maintenance cost compared to land installations and hence, till today, we are still having higher cost of electricity generation from offshore wind turbine farms compared to land based wind farms. But, this is compensated for the higher electricity generation capacity. So, if you want to aggressively expand electricity generation from wind farm technology, using offshore platforms is a very promising alternative even though the costs may be a bit high. 
so these are some of the uh, kind of platforms that are being used nowadays most of them are what are called the monopile platforms so these are uh, very close to the shore where the sea depth is less than 30 meters okay so this depth is less than 30 meters so you just put a single column through the seabed and on that you run your wind turbine okay then you have the jacket or a tripod stand this you will you will find more commonly basically taken from the oil rig kind of systems so here the seabed depth is 25 to 50 meters and you are getting uh, power outputs of 2 to 5 megawatts okay then you have more uh, uh, far offshore wind farms which are also have higher power output capacity and these use floating structures so you see these are basically floating structures which are connected to the seabed through cables okay because the sea depth is greater than 50 meters or even greater than 120 meters under these conditions so you you have to basically uh, rig them through cables just like you rig ships kind of that kind of a structure and the wind farm is over these floating structures okay this is more complicated design but you are getting higher power power output as a compensation all right now uh, apart from discussing individual turbines when you are uh, designing a wind farm you have to put multiple wind turbines together so like this kind of a structure okay you will have multiple wind farms that are arranged at a certain spacing uh, and all the electricity from the various wind turbines together is the electricity output from your wind farm all right now what is the optimum spacing for these kinds of wind farm technologies now here what is important is if you think of a wind farm we looked at uh, for a specific wind turbine we looked at far upstream and far downstream all right and we saw that the velocity decreases right so uh, the output velocity is one third of the inlet velocity uh, over that region where the wind turbine is operating okay. so now if a wind turbine is just downstream of so a second wind turbine is just downstream of the first wind turbine then he will get only one third of the actual prevailing wind velocity because V out is one third of V in, right? So that will significantly decrease its power output. So what we have to do is to space two wind turbines far enough so that the wind has a capacity to recover its velocity. So air is entering from the top and the wind that is coming out slowly recovers its velocity and momentum and it goes back to V in up after it moves a, a certain distance downstream of the first wind turbine. And so we have to find the optimum distance that is necessary so that the wind that is entering your second wind turbine downstream of the first wind turbine is still getting the same velocity as the first wind turbine uh, was. Okay. And this distance, uh, if you if a if a wind turbine turbine is placed just downstream is around 10 times the diameter of your swept blade area okay so if the sloped blade area diameter of this turbines is d then the distance between two turbines in the along the uh, downstream direction so the prevailing wind direction is this way and the wind turbines are arranged downstream is 10 d okay so if the swept blade diameter is 100 meters then 100 into 10 1000 meters so two wind turbines have to be placed one kilometer far out, further apart okay so that the wind has sufficient time to recover its velocity okay in the cross direction so the prevailing wind is blowing this way in the cross direction the impact of the first wind turbine is less typical spacing recommended is around 8d so 800 meters if the uh, swept blade diameter is 100 meters okay and this way you have to plan your wind turbines okay now the total area is l so this is say l and this is say l so uh, l square okay and you are separating it out into these types of uh, 10d 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 spacings 8d 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 spacings all right so obviously if you have bought a certain plot of land the number of wind turbines you can install is limited 
by the size of the swept blade area diameter. Okay. So suppose you have put 10 kilometer by 8 kilometer land area. Okay. Now you can put 10 wind turbines here because each wind turbine spacing is 1 kilometer. So you can put 10 here. And if this is 8 kilometers, then you, you are putting 800 meters. So again, you put 10 here. Okay. So you can put 10, 10, and this is also 10, 10. So there you will get around uh, 100 wind turbines can be uh, put into this 10 kilometer by 10 kilometer area. Okay. Given the number of, uh, given your swept blade diameter. All right. Now, if you decrease your uh, swept blade area, that is the dam, if you decrease the turbine diameter, you can put more wind turbines, but they will again, uh, each of them will generate less power because their swept blade diameters have decreased. So overall, the power generated by individual turbines is proportional to d square, pi by 4 d square, all right. But the number of turbines that you can put in a specific land area is proportional to 1 by d square. So it's 1 by d on this side and 1 by d on this side, some fun function of that. Okay. So actually the power you can generate out of your wind turbine, wind power farm is kind of independent of the diameter of your turbines. If you choose bigger diameter turbines, each turbine will generate more power, but you can put less of them. If you generate, if you uh, install small diameter turbines, each turbine can in, uh, generate, will generate less power, but you can install more of, more of them. And, and these two balance out so that for a given area of land and for a given prevailing wind speed, you will generate a, a, only a certain constant amount of power. Okay. Furthermore, it's important to know not only the speed of the wind uh, of the wind but also the prevailing direction of the wind and this is what is necessary to properly space your wind turbines because you can you have to space it farther apart if the prevailing direction is a certain direction and in the perpendicular to that you can space it more close so you can increase the efficiency of how much power you can generate right so this is called a wind rose chart i will show this in more clearly here so it not only gives you the wind speed which is the magnitude at which the wind is blowing but also the direction in which it is blowing all right so this this is the directional chart as you can see and this is the speed values this is given in knots uh, knots is a wind speed va value that is used in oceans but you can uh, convert this into meters per second as well and this is the probability quotient okay so you can see that for most, so this is around 14% and this is around 12%. So 14 plus 12 is 26%. Okay. So 26% of the time in this location, the wind is blowing in the west and west southwest direction. And you can also do the southwest direction here, which is around 8%. 26 plus 8, you are getting uh, 34%. So 34% of the time, the wind is blowing in this direction. All right. In the from the west to southwest direction. So you are, it's better for you to have your wind uh, turbines oriented along this row in, as the down, downstream side and this side as the perpendicular side. That way you will catch, you will uh, place your wind turbines most efficiently. Okay. And these values are individual wind speeds that you are getting. Okay. So this is just the summary of what we are saying that wind farms require a large land footprint in order to avoid the wake of the upstream turbine from affecting the downstream turbine flows. So you need to space them apart. Most current wind farms have average turbine spacing of 7D, but recent work has said, as we discussed, that you need a spacing of 10D on the downstream side and 8D on the cross stream stream. Okay. Power generated by an individual turbine is proportional to d square, but the number of turbines one can place in a given area of land is proportional to 1 by d square. Thus, the net power generated by optimally placed wind turbines in a given area of land is independent of the turbine blade area. Large diameter turbines require large spacings and hence fewer of them can be placed in a given land area. 
So the current average production is around 4 megawatt of power per square kilometer of land. So a, a typical wind farm produces this amount of power, 4 megawatt per square kilometer. Okay. However, most of the land between turbines is unused and can be used for agriculture or animal husbandry. So it's not as if uh, you cannot use the land between the wind uh, uh, between the wind turbines. You can use them, but not for large scale construction. You can do it for agriculture. You can do it for animal uh, cattle rearing, sheep rearing, etc. Activities that do not require constructions. So amount of land directly impacted by wind turbine tower construction is quite low. It's around 0.5 to 2 hectares per megawatt. One hectare is 0 0.01 square kilometer. Okay, so clearly you can see it's, it is around 0 0.005 to 0 0.02 square kilometer per megawatt. That is the actual land area that is utilized by the towers. Okay. So this kind of uh, finishes our wind turbine technology uh, discussion. In the next class, we will start with solar energy based power systems. We will first discuss the available solar power that is available on the world and how we can track the variation of solar power in different locations and then we will look at ways to utilize solar energy. Okay. Thank you for listening and see you in the next class.